All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode 10 of our virtual happy hour series with Spirit Hub. I'm your host, Emily, and this week we're heading to the Wild West of Dodge City in Kansas to chat with Lee from Boot Hill Distillery. Hey, everybody. Lee here with Boot Hill Distillery uh, coming to you live from the Old City Jail in Dodge City, Kansas. Great to be here, Emily. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're excited to talk about uh, all things, uh, not only Dodge City, but Boot Hill Distilleries as well. For sure, definitely. We're really glad to have you here with us. Um, and we're also glad to have the viewers here with us today. Um, for those of you that don't know, Spirit Hub is an online retailer of craft spirits from over 200 independently owned distilleries. Um, we ship hard to find spirits directly to your door within the state of Illinois. Uh, we plan on expanding into more states, so be on the lookout for that. Um, again, we're really excited to talk to Lee from Boot Hill Distillery today and um, follow along with us. Um, you can ask questions in the, we're going to have a Q&A section at the end. Um, and you can have, ask questions in our Facebook Live down in the comments and get to know uh, Boot Hill Distillery a little bit more. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Lee and he's going to tell you all about it. Thanks, Emily, so much. Again, it's great to be here with everybody. Like I said, I'm coming to you from the old city jail in Dodge City. Uh, the building that we're in was once the old uh, city hall. This is uh, where you come pay your water bill, but also house the police department, the old fire department, uh, as well as uh, the city courtroom and city offices were all here. So it's not only where you would come to uh, uh, perhaps uh, pay your dues while you were misbehaved in Dodge City, but also where you maybe just pay your water bill too. But <laughs> so this building that, was, that we're in right now was, uh, well, she's almost 90 years old. She was built in 1929. But going back a little wow. further than that, and why we're called Boot Hill Distillery is the fact that this building was built on the original Boot Hill Cemetery site dating back to the 1870s. So wow. see if you met your unfortunate demise here in Dodge City. Yeah, now Emily, everybody's heard of Dodge City, right? <laughs> in some form or fashion, get the heck out of Dodge. Being nice, oh, obviously. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get oh, the heck yeah. out of Dodge. That's where that right. phrase comes from. So Dodge City kind of had this violent Wild West past going back to the 1870s, about 140, 145, 146 years ago. Well, and nice. characters like Matt Masterson, Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, they were all here and spent a short amount of time in Dodge City. And so going back to if you met your unfortunate demise in Dodge, because, you know, we did kind of have a little bit of a violent past. You met your unfortunate demise and, and nobody knew who you were. Well, something and something had to be done with your remains. Well, they say they died with their boots on, they were buried in a shallow grave, usually maybe marked, maybe not marked. And that's where the name Boot Hill Cemetery came from. Now, oh, there are other boot hills all across the country uh, that, that would date back to about this time period, but uh, we like to lay claim that this was the original Boot Hill in Dodge City. So this was a burial ground for about six years, from 1872 to 1878. And then, don't worry, <laughs> but I'm getting to the rest of the history. Um, <laughs> by 1878, the dots of the town was, was expanding, and so uh, the cemetery was decided to be moved to another location. So all the bodies were disinterred. Uh, they were moved to a location north of town, which is now all residential. Um, and uh, on this site, a schoolhouse was built. And the schoolhouse stood here for almost 50 years, from 1879 until 1927. By the uh, uh, late 20s, again, Dodge City is growing and expanding. And uh, that school had actually kind of outlived its serviceable life by that point. 50 years is a pretty good run. Wow. So after some back and forth, the city decided to repurchase that land. They tore the schoolhouse down and construction on our building started. So it was started in 1927, it was completed two years later in 1929, and as, as I mentioned earlier, it was opened up as the city uh, municipal building or city hall. And so it was designed and built to hold all the city services under one roof, the police department, fire department, the city clerk's office, the city uh, judge, uh, and, and of course, where I am in the jail. Now, interesting fact is doesn't just be kind of the brick wall behind me, any semblance of this being a jail was torn out 
uh, in the 70s. The, the, the police department moved out in 1971, and so it turned into office space, actually, that of all things. And so when we got the building, well, she was in pretty rough shape. Long story short, um, the, it had not been occupied for almost 14 years until our ownership came along. Uh, okay. And at that point, you know, it had been vandalized. Uh, the masonry was crumbling. Windows had been broken out. The roof had caved in in places. And water was getting in everywhere. Pigeons had taken up residence. And so, so they had to fix the rubber, huh? So here were the cities we're looking at. What are we going to do with this building? Well, they opened it up for an open bid, maybe an entrepreneur, somebody wanted to come in and do something with it. Uh, and really nothing quite gelled. So the city was about ready to tear this building down. It was about two weeks away from the wrecking ball. Um, if you go to our website, you'll see more pictures about what I'm talking about, what it looks like. It's a beautiful building. Interesting. Until our owners came along. So we are basically owned by two Southwest Kansas farmers. And the idea was uh, my, my boss, Hayes Kelman, who's actually probably sitting on a tractor planting corn right now, uh, <laughs> looking at a way to what else can we do than plant corn, plant wheat, and try to sell it on the best price the market will bear. How can we control or how can we add value to the grain that they've been growing for five generations in southwest Kansas? Now, their farms are about 50 miles southwest of here. But we're probably, I'm not saying we're the only one, we're definitely one of the only distilleries in Kansas for sure that knows where every bit of grain that goes to our spirits comes from. That's uh, awesome. Literally, so important. Get planted uh, and harvested. They come to our distillery, which is right outside of my windows here. We're on the second floor, by the way. Uh, right outside <laughs> my windows here. Uh, and then, of course, we, we, we mill it, we mash it, uh, ferment it, distill it. We undertake the whole process here. Or, as we like to call it, Soil sip. Soil sip. That's Soil right. Sip. Yeah. From I remember we did a. To, to the end of final product, we've had entire control of the whole thing. One of the few distilleries, like I said, I know we're not the only one, but we're definitely one of the only just few distilleries that can that can claim that, that we are the farmers first and we are using our own crop materials to, to make uh, our spirits. So this whole process, going back to the building now, this whole process, like I said, it was about two weeks away from, from being torn down. Uh, we purchased it in 2014. It took two years to restore it uh, before we could open our doors July 30th, 2016. And now here we are, uh, what, almost four, be four years next month, I think. Yes. Yeah. About four years next month. And so we've come quite a long way in, uh, in, in that amount of time. We, we're, we're pretty excited of where we've been, but we're also excited at going where we're going as well. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's the long and the short of who we are and how we got here from this being a burial ground. <laughs> awesome. It sounds like you guys have a lot of rich history. That building has been through a lot. It's been one thing and then the other, and then now it's a distillery. Um, and then you mentioned that you guys are a farm distillery. Um, I know that we did like a, a farm blog last year. We included um, farm distilleries, and Boot Hill was one of them. And I remember all the photos that you sent to us. and. Really nice, really nice shots there. Yeah, um, I can clearly say our, our bourbon is is underway as we speak, 50 miles southwest here. So it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. cool to be able to know exactly where your where your all your raw materials come from. For sure, perfect. Um, all right, so today um, you're going to talk about your award-winning vodka and your a few whiskeys. But first, um, let's get into your vodka and tell us um, it just won an award, like I just said, um, this past year. And uh, let us, we're going to do a cocktail here also with it. So let's get into your vodka. Absolutely. So when you're a young distillery like us, and probably like many on the platform know, you've got to start somewhere, right? You got to, you just got to make that first step. And when it comes to distilling spirits, really the fastest spirit that you can have from grain to ethanol or to ready to finish product is vodka. Uh, we can have vodka made in about seven to 10 days, 10 days on the, on the oh. high end. And so, yeah, when we, our first product was released, you know, when we opened, we didn't have anything to sell but t-shirts, I think. Uh, and so it was several, several months later that, uh, we know, a lot of little bit of trial, a little bit of error, a little bit of learning. We were able to finally put a product on the bottle. And so, yes, vodka. Now, here's, I know maybe some of the folks out there are going, really vodka? But I, I, there's Absolute, there's Stoli, there's all kinds of other brands out there, right? 
Yes, but it's not this. So it's not the same. What is vodka? Let's just talk about that for a minute. Vodka, basically by definition, is an odorless, colorless, neutral green spirit. And so the way it's distilled uh, is uh, the process by which we distill, excuse me, is, is uh, designed to remove all the impurities, remove all the flavor, uh, with a little bit of an exception here. Uh, so we use 100% hard red winter wheat. This is a wheat vodka. Vodka can be made from anything as long as it's a permit. Uh, but in our case, we are Kansas is a wheat state, and so we grow a lot of wheat, and that seems to be the right thing to do. So this is 100% wheat vodka. Uh, vodka has to, to achieve that odorless and colorless nature has to be distilled up to 190 proof or higher. That's almost 95 to 96 percent alcohol. And our still, we have an 18 plate column still, allows us to get to that point. So we go through all the fermentation, we strip all of the uh, low wines out, and then it goes into our uh, column still uh, to achieve that high proof. Um, Let's just say out of about 100 gallons of what we call low wines, um, we'll get about 25 to 28 gallons of 190 proof, what they call either neutral grain spirit or simply vodka. So I just wanted to go over a little of the process on, on uh, you know, what is it? How, how is vodka made? What, why is it vodka? Well, that's it. It's just supposed not to have any kind of flavor to it. Now, we have an exception. <laughs> Don't actually distill all the flavor out of it. If we ran through our stills one or two more times, then yes, we would have something that has almost no flavor to it. But this actually has a little bit of a little bit of a, a little bit of flavor and uh, almost has a kind of a graininess to it. You taste the grain, you taste the wheat, which mm. is what we like about it. Uh, and, and and so it's it kind of blows out of water that that a vodka has to have no flavor. And in our case, and obviously because we now this just took a gold medal from the American Craft Spirits Association and Best Craft Vodka for 2020, well, apparently some other people think so too. So we're we're pretty we're we're pretty excited about that. And that's one reason that I wanted to bring it to the platform today uh, is um, this isn't just a normal vodka. It's 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 pretty good stuff. And uh, yeah, of course. You only take my word for it. You just got to try it. So fortunately, that's why your platform is here, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes. And we do carry that. Um, like I said, on spirithub.com. If you live in Illinois, we can ship it direct to your door. Um, and that is their award-winning vodka. Um, all right. So you have a special um, cocktail that you wanted to share with us with the vodka. Well, I'm I that. am so glad you asked. Because yes, I did. Happy to bring a cocktail with me today. But... Uh, before I get into that, this is one that we kind of came up with. Um, uh, it was inspired, I should say. And it was inspired by some of our favorite cop, uh, pop culture references. And I, I'll just say the name of the cocktail is called The Dude. And uh, that should Does hopefully conjure up the, the reference that it comes from. But if it doesn't. I have to, I can't make this cocktail. I'm a little underdressed to make that cocktail. So I need to change just briefly. Okay. <laughs> See what he gets into here. Into the appropriate sweater. <laughs> for the dude does abide. El Duderino, uh, his dudeness. And that's where this cocktail comes from. So, as you can imagine, here we go. This is a our version of a white Russian. So, let me find all my stuff here. And really, here's the other cool thing about this cocktail is you should ideally have everything in your pantry uh, to to make it. And it, it's just incredibly simple. You really only need one spirit. And here's the thing about that is. You would think a white Russian usually takes a coffee liqueur, right? Well, first off, we don't make a coffee liqueur, at, at least not yet. Uh, but in, 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 the, in, the, in the spirit of maybe not having one and in the spirit of just, you know, getting things done, we crafted this recipe uh, to not require any Kahlua. So, but again, this right. is our white Russian. This is not the last one. Ah, this one has our logo on it. Let me see it. There you go. 
All right, so to create this cocktail, first you have to be properly attired and in the proper mindset, right? We gotta, we just gotta go with the flow of things. And that's what we're doing. So we're gonna take vodka. And I don't have a measuring device, except I do have a shot glass with me. So this requires an ounce and a half of Boot Hill Distillery vodka. So I'm using one of our shot glasses. Hey, get as close as you can with whatever you got at the house. That's all it requires. Now here is kind of where the secret sauce of this is going to come from. First off, you're gonna have uh, need simple syrup. Now, simple syrup is just sugar and water. We kind of boil ours together, but if you don't even wanna do that, just get really hot tap water and sugar in equal parts, you make simple syrup, it's that fast. So we're gonna right. take about an ounce of simple syrup. And that's about half there, that'll work. Goes right into your glass. Now here's the genius, instant coffee. Oh. Just cheapest coffee you can find, but make sure it's the instant, instant stuff. And in this case, I think the recipe calls for a couple of uh, bar spoons, but in our case, I'm just gonna use the old uh, plastic spoon I found uh, in the old junk drawer. But I think we're gonna put uh, about two full heaping tablespoons of coffee, instant coffee into our glass here. I'm gonna move this down. I don't know if you can quite see it. Let's With the vodka, okay. Cocktail. Okay, so what we're essentially trying to do here is we want to dissolve all that coffee. So basically just give it a vigorous stir until it basically turns black and soupy. And so the ethanol from the vodka and the uh, sugar is going to start kind of emulsify a little bit. And not only have you added your vodka, but you've also basically made your own coffee liqueur right here in the glass. How easy is that? Interesting. Right? I'll have to try that sometime. <laughs> okay. okay. So then, you're gonna get to find yourself a little ice. Go ahead and pop it off here. As much ice as you want, as little ice as you want. Hey, it's your cocktail. You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> then, in our case, we use heavy cream. Now, could you use half and half? Absolutely. Could you use regular milk? Absolutely. Could you use a non-dairy product of your choice? Hey, it's your cocktail. You can do whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> Most important thing is make sure it's okay. I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to use it. You're going to so find right out. Top, don't even bother <laughs> measuring this. However much to fill the top of your glass. Now, if you want to, give it a stir. If you don't want to, don't worry about it. In my case, I'm going to just kind of sort of get a little bit of that sort of tap together there. Obviously, you have your cream on top. You got your everything else down below. You have created an absolutely fantastic cocktail with a great homage. Cheers. Mm. Oh god, I made it. <laughs> so anyway, looks delicious. And I tell you, you try this at home, you're you're just gonna you will your mind will just be blown. It it'll. It is exactly like a white Russian, and uh, you, it's just, it's just, it's, it's going to transport you to another place, so. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you again for um, telling us about your award-winning vodka and making us the dude cocktail. Um, for those of you at home that are interested in that recipe, um, we'll have it in our Facebook comments, and you can find that on our website on Boot Hill's profile at spearhub.com. All right, um, we have a couple more spirits we want to talk about and another Absolutely. recipe, so we'll get into the whiskeys. And Lee is going to talk to us a little bit about aging whiskey and the processes of the aging of the whiskey, and we will get to that in just one second. All right, for those you know, of you just joining us. Here, I could swear there was a guy, I just met him on the way out, that looked almost exactly like me, but he had on this crazy sweater. <laughs> I don't know how he got in, but uh, I, I, I hope I hope he got what he needed. So anyway, yeah. Glad you're back, Lee. About whiskey. Put my, put my beverage over here, man. So, as I mentioned, we are a we're a relatively young distillery, and when you're a young distillery, you have to start somewhere, right? Well, we just talked about the vodka. 
uh, the other two spirits that are on your platform and um, uh, are, 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 are our white whiskey and red eye whiskey. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is that, right? Well, we're kind of in this unique position being young distillery. This is all our own process, all our own spirits. All, you know, we had, we had to start somewhere. And we almost had this unique position of um, watching the aging process almost in real time. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what A, what whiskey is, a little bit about the distillation process on it, and then how the aging process works, hopefully very briefly here. So when spirits are distilled, whether it be vodka or whether it be a whiskey, it comes out as clear as this from the still. So where does the color and where does the flavor come from? All that happens essentially from the barrel and the amount of time that it spends in the barrel. And so the barrel acts as a filter. It acts as a coloring component and a flavoring component to get what we would associate with your normal whiskey flavors. Uh, it, uh, that's what's, what's, going, what's going to happen only, it's going to happen over a longer period of time. So I brought just a little sample of one of our barrels, kind of a, of a piece of one of the heads, but they're all charred on the inside. So you see the, I don't know if you can quite see the, uh, this is this is not really a heavy char, I and mean, this one wasn't used very uh, long, but so all the barrels, all the staves on the inside of these barrels are all burned. Well, so what happens when you burn, um, actually, let me back up. American white oak, of course, being the, the only wood of choice that can be, that can be used in, in the aging of whiskey and bourbon, specifically bourbon, um, is uh, in, in part because of the chemical makeup that's in these barrels. So there's flavors, there's vanillins, there's tannins, there's sugar, there's glucose that's all locked away in this in this uh, in the wood. Well, what happens when you burn wood? You get charcoal, right? Charcoal acts as a filter. What happens when you burn sugar? Well, you get um, you get like caramel. Well, that, that acts as a sweetener. These barrels are just sitting here. So through the expansion, the contraction of them sitting in the heat, the spirit is absorbed into the barrel, goes through the sugar layer into the wood itself. And then when they cool off, that gets squeezed back out into the barrel. And that just happens over and over and over again. So the longer the spirit sits in the barrel, the more refined it's going to get over time. And that's why I say on our white whiskey and our red eye whiskey, we've got almost the aging process in real time. So this is one week in a barrel. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Interesting. It's got a little bit of a straw color to it. It's very light. Um, this is one week after it gets distilled and it goes into a barrel and we pull it out. This was kind of one of those aha moments. Hey, this isn't stuff in half bad. But it's still raw, it's still grainy, it's still got some rougher edges to it. Um, and then later on down the line, as we got older, we had uh, what we call red eye whiskey. Um, this was anywhere between six and 12 months of age. We use different sized barrels uh, because the smaller the barrel, the faster the aging process. You really can't cheat time, but you can you can control the surface area that you have to uh, for the spirit to come in contact with. So the smaller the barrel, the faster the aging, the larger the barrel, the longer it's going to take. Well, after about five, uh, well, it's act, truthfully, it started off with like two month old when our first couple of batches. Now we're getting into uh, older and older barrels. Um, but that's where our uh, where we got our red eye whiskey come from. We're now up to I think batch eleven red eye whiskey, and truthfully, it's only getting better with age because we're pulling out of some of those older and older barrels. Like I said, you can't really cheat time, but you can kind of use a few little tricks uh, to sort of help that along. And again, it's all our own whiskey. It's definitely when you taste it, you know that it's Blue Hill Distillery whiskey. We've got a flavor profile that is very unique to. Our, our region and uh, and what we do out here. If, if someone, if, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the term terroir, usually you hear it in wine, that the soil and the climate affects everything. That's the uh, what's gonna happen to the grapes. Well, I think the same is very true for, for whiskey. I think our climate and uh, the quality of the grain that we're using coming off of our farms makes a huge difference in the final product. So there is definitely terroir for whiskey, I think. I also think that we've kind of blown out of the water that Older whiskey doesn't necessarily mean better. You can still have a perfectly drinkable, uh, easy drinking whiskey uh, in a shorter amount of time. So at least that's our hope. For now, sure, that yeah. being said, whiskeys. I want to complete the triumvirate as a little teaser. We do also have our own bourbon. 
Um, and this is this will be hopefully coming soon. But uh, yes, we do have a longer aging process, and uh, and we have whiskeys that are sitting back longer and longer, definitely over three years now. Remember, we're only almost three and a half years old, so we've got some of our other barrels that are just sitting back there because truthfully, it's only getting better the longer it sits. That's right. That's right. So right. You can find Boot Hill's white whiskey and their red eye whiskey on spirithub.com. Um, we will hopefully eventually get their bourbon in soon. So be on the lookout for that. And we'll let everybody know. Um, we do have another special cocktail to do with the red eye whiskey. This one is very interactive and I have my, I'm ready here with my own. So All right, you're ready, ready to, to follow away? along now. Now, okay, okay I guess I got to ask, you bring a bottle opener? I did. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I nearly forgot mine. <laughs> so this is, again, one of those recipes that's just easy to recreate at home. You know, we're all social distancing. We're all being very responsible. We're all doing the things that we're supposed to do to stay well and stay healthy and keep our friends and neighbors healthy. So this is a cocktail you don't even need a glass for. You don't even need ice for it. It's simply whiskey. We'll just say this is your favorite uh, all sugar uh, Coke uh, or, or soda or pop or whatever. What do you call it where you're from? Is it pop uh, or pop. soda? Ah, pop. pop. I think that's Being from Ohio, yeah, pop, but I think yeah. it's still pop, pop up here also. So your favorite pop, Northern. and of course, this is the real sugar stuff that comes from Mexico. So this got to make sure that uh, uh, don't buy the plastic bottle stuff for this because, I mean, you know, it's your drink. You can do whatever you want. But... <laughs> recommended you know it's the high sugar stuff so obviously you're going to start off and we need to make a little room in our in our bottle here so i got another glass now one thing you can probably see is you got this kind of label right here right you're going to want to pour about or drink emily i like how you're thinking there <laughs> or drink uh about that much out in my case i'm going to pour it just for uh demonstration purposes about how much. So you're pouring about maybe two ounces out. Now here's the pro tip. The more you pour your, your pop out, the more whiskey you're gonna be able to fit in your bottle. Pro tip. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. So you're gonna take your whiskey. Now, I, okay, I'm cheating a little bit because we have a bar and I have a pour spout. But, so you know about where your, your uh, uh, whiskey or how much your, your, your original line was, you want to fill it back up to about that line. Again, I'm using a four spout. If you get these, great. If not, you can find a little funnel that fits in there. It's probably the best way. Or just pour it over your sink or into over another glass because you're going to make a mess. So what I'm going to do here is just pour straight in the bottle. And we're going to kind of fill up roughly about to that line. Now, what have we essentially made here? Whiskey and cup. Going to the next level, though. So, um, right here in front of my face. Now, there might be some members of our audience that might remember a time where you used to put peanuts in your soda pop. In some cases, it was called farmer's pop because let's say you were out in the field working, you got your hands dirty, and you didn't want to uh, get your grubby hands all over your, your peanuts. Uh, they would pour the peanuts into the soda pop. Well, we're bringing that back. So get yourself a, you know, the, the jar of peanuts uh, or the uh, little individual packages. But before we want to do that, we want to kind of mix this up. Now here is the trick and be ready with towels because it is not necessarily easy. And you're the only one that's making this drink for you. So you can touch the top of this all you want. Take your thumb and just kind of put it right over the top and very slowly start to invert and over. Now, I'm going to step back. <laughs> whiskey and the Coke. Now those are two are mixed. See, you did it real gentle, right? And then, you're going to take the peanuts and just kind of like this, put your hand over here and start dumping the peanuts straight into into All the right. You need to do All in here. one. Here we go. Yeah. Let's open my package up a little more here. Ah, peanuts just go straight in. Uh, it might be a little careful because it's going to fizz a little bit. And then take the rest of the ones you captured and you're chilling and the ones that drop all over your countertop and stick them back in there. Now, that's it. Consider. All right. 
So what you're going to get is a snack and a whiskey and Coke all in the same container. It's genius. At least I think. That's pretty genius. So with that. Right, cheers. Cheers. So you get the peanut, you get kind of a little snack on those, you get that salty sweetness, you get the whiskey in behind it. You made yourself a delicious, delicious treat. Oh my goodness, how much fun. And it was that easy. So all you need is a, is a bottle of, of soda and uh, oh, your sure. favorite whiskey and <laughs> some peanuts. Sip. And you got yourself a snack, something to kind of chew on, and uh, it is the perfect social distance cocktail. I love it. Super great. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, again, you can find this recipe. Um, we just posted that in our Facebook chat, and um, we also have it on our website, spearhub.com. Uh, we have a couple questions coming in from the um, group here. So we are going on to our live Q&A session. Okay. So don't forget, ask your questions for Lee. So the first question is, um, Robert asks, what is the mash bill of your whiskey? Excellent question, Robert. So our mash bill is follows the bourbon mash, which has to have a minimum of 51% corn. So, and then the rest of that is 49% wheat. So this is a high, high, high wheat whiskey. And it's the same mash bill all the way through the aging process. The wheat, the white whiskey and the red eye and our bourbon all have the same mash bill. So it's, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, wheat whiskeys that are, uh, weeded bourbon, excuse me, wheat that bourbon. are, have that high of a wheat content. But yeah, 51% corn, 49% wheat. And uh, that's part of what makes this so smooth. Awesome. That's interesting. Awesome. Um, I do have a question. Um, why do you call the third ward um, cocktail that we just made, all the all-in-one yeah. cocktail, why do you call that the third ward? I did, yes, I was about to mention that. Why do we call it the third ward? This goes back into history now. So I mentioned the schoolhouse that was built on this site before our building was built. That was called the third ward school. Interesting. So there were actually three wards, and uh, maybe more. There was at least three wards in Dodge City in the 1870s. And this was the largest. It was the first multi-story, multi-room brick schoolhouse in Southwest Kansas, uh, starting in 1879. Oh my gosh, I love the rich history that you guys have down there. That's awesome. Awesome. Cool. My, yeah, my, um, my cousin, there's, there's a car show down in a uh, big, big car show down in Dodge City. I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but he's been there and he loves Dodge City. So shout out to my cousin right here. Nice. Um, do you plan on release? I know we, we kind of went over this a little bit um, with your bourbons. Um, but do you plan do you plan on releasing longer age whiskeys in that's the future? Well, that's, that's our goal. Sorry, I'm still consuming peanut. <laughs> <laughs> that's our goal is to uh, really craft some of the finest whiskey and finest bourbon that you can get anywhere in the world. Um, you know, like I said, we can, we have control of the whole over the whole process, and so. Uh, we're really excited on where, where, where our spirits are going. I don't know if I mentioned on the, on the bourbon here, but we were real excited. The San Francisco World Spirits Awards uh, gave that a gold medal uh, for 2020 as well. So um, it's a two-year-old bourbon, um, but it's obviously getting some, some nice attention. I uh, got a, uh, anywhere between a nine, uh, see, I think a 93 rating from uh, Tasting Panel. Uh, Meredith May gave us that, and so it's gotten some nice, uh, nice attention. Yes, uh, we, we, like I said, we've got some of our barrels that are being held back uh, as long as we possibly can uh, uh, to release a straight, straight bourbon whiskey, and then at some point we'll hopefully get that bottled and bond uh, bourbon whiskey. So that's four years or older, and uh, that's just nothing but time. So, but yeah, we do have a longer aging process. We also did just release a straight wheat whiskey. Uh, that's kind of distillery only right now. Uh, two year, two and a half year old, 100% wheat whiskey. Um, watch for that maybe on platform soon. But um, yeah, this is nothing but time. As we get older, yeah. we will be releasing more and more older and older spirits. But you gotta start somewhere. What else? Perfect. That sounds 
great. Um, another question we have is, um, have you have you have any have you had any ghost encounters in your super old building? <laughs> um, how do I answer that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, it's, it, it, as we like to say, we're we're distilling spirits on spirits. Uh, and, and and on the bottle we have on our label it says there's authentic boot hill spirit in every bottle um i've heard stories uh both prior to us owning this building and even after us owning this building i have heard stories um i can only say that i really exited this building very quickly one time at night uh it was just time to go i was the only person <laughs> in the building that i knew of and I thought I had a visitor and it was time to go. That's the, all I can actually say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do it, won't it? <laughs> and it just takes, you know, so you're like, okay, if that's the ghost, it's <laughs> he's obviously clocking in, so it's time for me to clock out. <laughs> right. But yes, that, awesome. that's, that's a good question. Is this, are we haunted? That's up for debate. We shall see. We shall see. Keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. Um, all right. Um, well, that wraps up our Q&A session and the rest of this episode. Um, again, thank you so much for the viewers um, joining us today um, for Boot Hill Distillery. Um, we do have a coupon code for you to use that expires um, at the end on um, midnight on Friday. Um, and that's HAPPY10, H-A-P-P-Y-1-0. You can use that to purchase any one of Boot Hill Distillery's um, amazing spirits on our platform. Uh, I just want to thank Lee and Boot Hill Distillery again for joining us today and telling us about the awesome history of your distillery and your amazing award-winning spirits and some really cool, fun, at-home cocktails. Emily, thank you so much for having us. You know, just wrap, wrapping up briefly, if I, I just, just to say a few words, uh, anybody out there, support your local craft distillery. We're, uh, we're in some interesting times right now, and as I like to say, you know, the big boys are going to be just fine, but whether you purchase on Spirit Hub or you find however you can support your local craft distillery, it will mean the world to us, and to them, uh, and the communities in which they serve. So, um, whenever you can, I know it may be a little tougher now, but whenever you can, support local, support craft, it's, it's important. That's right, and Spirit Hub is all about supporting our independent distillery partners, and we are here to support local while staying local. 